Good evening. This is Edward and Anne, sonsofgod.com. It's the 24th of May, Saturday evening. We wanted to send our greetings out to all of you who are tracking with us. I know it's been a bit of a season since we've really done much in the way of communicating, but I know that all of us are waiting before God for insight and direction, for doors to open that need to be opened, and for doors to close that need to be once and for all closed. So I send our greetings to all of you, like Paul spoke in the the book of Acts, and Luke spoke um, in the first chapter. He referred to those ardent Christians as Theophilus, and which translated means lovers of God, lovers of the Word. So, what are we doing right now? That's a very good question. I think right now we're still in that mode of looking to put the pieces together that God has already laid out. The Word has come so many times that He's already given it to us. We just don't realize what we've been given. And that has been the difficulty, uh, is coming out of an inability to see into open vision. I'm not talking about open vision as far as seeing spirits, but open vision within our own being, where our being is filled with light and no darkness, and we're able to actually see. And in seeing, change, and in changing, we find that the drive that drives the Father and drives the Son becomes the very force that drives us. How often have we looked to the Lord and said, Lord, I know that I'm not walking as I should. Even Paul said that. He said, I do things I ought, you would not want to. You know, he had that perplexity. And I know that we all are looking for something more out of our walk before him. Whether you call it your devotional walk, your your connection, your relationship, something more than what we've been able to do. And yet when it comes down to it, in ourselves, we come up dismally short. And I believe because it's because what we're looking for is God's drive. Now, we've talked about how driven the Father is for the relationship with the sons, far greater than our own personal drive back to, to know the Father and to know the Lord. His drive is even greater to have that relationship and connection with the sons. And I know that we don't really comprehend that as we would like to. But I've come to the conclusion that what we're looking for right now is a touch from the Lord where we enter into His drive. And that drive is born out of being able to see beyond the veil. I believe that um, it's referenced in the book of Hebrews. Let's turn to that for a second. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. This speaks about those who died in the faith, the cloud of witnesses. It says, all of these died in faith without receiving the promises, having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles in the earth. For those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own. And it, it, you know, it goes on, but essentially, those who died in the faith in Hebrews 11, they had that capacity that they saw. They saw what was coming. And they embraced it, even though it wasn't for this time. And it gave them staying power 
to you know just to 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 to, pr- to press forward similar to um Paul when he said you know I haven't yet attained it you know the out resurrection of the dead and so he lived on tiptoe reaching there was something that happened in Paul that is not described in the scriptures and it may have happened well I, I I'm not even conjecture but something happened within Paul at some point where the drive of the Father and the drive of the Holy Spirit was imparted deep within him. And it was that drive that drove Paul. It wasn't Paul's personal drive. It wasn't his desire or hunger. But it was something that was given to Paul. And that it was the drive of the Father. And that's what drove Paul. And so he saw, similar to the, you know, those that died in the faith in Hebrews 11, he saw what was coming. He saw what was really available, but he had not yet attained it. But he saw the close proximity of it, and he was driven to obtain it. You know, it says that he might obtain the out-resurrection from the dead. And so often, I, I don't know if we've understood that the drive that we have that separates us, that people do not understand about us, about how the suns tick, you know, they, they just don't get it. It's because it's a drive that's imparted to you from the Lord. It's not your drive. It's His drive. The problem is, we need another touch. It's like the Lord when He, you know, laid hands on the man, uh, and, and the man, and the Lord said, "What do you see?" And I see men as trees walking. I hate to say. But to a certain degree, we still see ministries walking because it's the partial. We see, I mean, we were blind and now we see, but we don't quite clearly see enough. And so the Lord laid hands again and opened the man's eyes and he fully saw. And that's what we need right now. We need a touch from the Lord that we might really see. The Father needs to touch His sons. And that would be our prayer before the Father this night. Father, You have brought us to this point. It has been Your drive, Your hunger, Your love that has been put within us. We have nothing in ourselves. This is not something that we've worked up. Look at my drive. Look at my hunger. Look at whatever. Nothing has come from within us. It's been imputed to us from the Holy Spirit, from the Lord. The drive that you have is not your drive. It's a drive that he has put within you to know him. That's what Paul had. That's what separated Paul from so many in the churches, even from some of the disciples who didn't understand what is it that drives you, Paul? And they can look at the sons and they can say, I don't understand. What is it that drives you? You know, you can go to other Christians. Well, I know, I know the Lord and I have a relationship, but I'm not like you. And they don't understand the drive because it has to be something that God does. And I think that this is where we are again. And we've been at this address probably many times during our sojourn. Lord, we need a touch. We need your drive to possess us even more then it has already possessed us. I remember years ago when we had left pastoring churches 
and a young man that we knew, a friend, had come over one day. We were living, you know, kind of a rural area, and I was working in the Word, you know, just going through many things. And he, he came over lightly and says, well, how's everything doing? And I said, I said, I, you know, my gut is wrenched. I'm just, you know, I'm so driven. And he, and he looked at me and he couldn't understand what I was talking about. He didn't know. Even though he had been part of the same churches that we had been a part of. Because something had so possessed us at that time. And I know that this last leg is the most difficult. This last leap into sonship, into transformation, into the initiation of judgments in the earth on a large, larger scale than we've seen is the greatest hurdle yet. It's like being on the sojourn, you know, being in the race. There's like several sections of the race. And at first it started out, and it's maybe not too hard, but then as the race continues and you're going around the track, let's say, it gets progressively more and more difficult. And that's, that's how it's been. We're on this last leg, and it's, it is taking everything to make this transition. And we can't do it without the Father and shouts of grace appearing to the sons and putting within them what they need. It's one thing for the Father to say, I've already given it to you, it's right here. And, and we can say, yes, Father, it's here. I acknowledge it, but I, I'm not seeing it. Obviously, I'm not seeing it clear enough because if I saw it, I would be transformed by what I saw. But I haven't seen it deep enough. Lord, we're driven, but there is something missing that we have to have. All of your sons have to have a touch that imparts to us the drive of God. God is so much more driven for what is happening in the earth and what is to happen in the judgments, in what is going to take place, in, in just the whole shift that's going to happen in, in, you know, across the board. And he's waited a long time. He's been very patient. He's been, the husbandman has been very patient waiting for the precious fruit, you know, of the earth, which is the sons. So the father's been very patient but we have to have something of an impartation from the Spirit of God that gives us what we need to finish this, the impartation of His drive, His sight. I don't want my sight. I don't want my vision. I don't want it to be constrained by the filter of my soul that still filters what I see or analyzes it. We, as, as, and we've talked about this before. As much as God has given us, you always come to that point where he says, okay, my son, let go, that I might give you the better. But Lord, I, I don't want to let go. I've got this, and I can see these things. I mean, you may not even realize you're saying, I don't want to let go, but it's just something innately within that says, okay, Lord, I let go, but you're really not letting go because you don't even really understand what that means. But the Lord says, you've got to let go that I might give you the greater. And I just know that what we have, we've run with. To the best of our ability, we have run with. But you hit that point where he takes away the first that he might establish the second. Lord, you have to establish the second within us. We must have your drive, Lord, 
that we can't even put words upon that. We thought we were weird at this point. I don't even know what we're going to be like on the other side of, of this next touch of, from God. But we must have that drive that consumes us as we pursue after knowing the Lord. And we know that His drive is far greater than ours. And I'm just saying, Lord, we need you to touch us. This has never been our drive. We cannot look back at our life and say, well, see what I've done. See what I've mustered up. See, what, see my devotional life. See what I've attained. Or see what I've been able to do with that little mustard seed that he's given me. You know, the talent. Well, I just say, we haven't been able to do anything in and of ourselves. What we have, we have been given. And we have been faithful to run with what he's given us. We've been faithful not to drop the word, not to walk away from it, not to let it go, but to hold it in our heart and to agonize and groan before him and travail that he might bring it to pass. Lord, we have not let go of your word. Your word has come and we have embraced it like a sword through our heart. Many have come and many have gone and many have walked away from the word of this hour and gone the path of the world or any other direction. But Lord, there has been a nucleus down through the ages who have not relinquished your word. And Lord, we're of that. We have not let go of your word. But Lord, you must touch us. We must have from you your drive on a deeper level than you've given us. What we've had, you've given us, and it's been good. But Lord, this last bit of the race is going to take something more than what we've been able to do within ourselves. Lord, there has to be a touch. It's not that we're running out of gas. We just are missing an element that you have to give us to get this race finished. We're not going to complete this race and break the tape running with the baton that's been passed to us in and of ourselves. We know that. But something has to happen that takes it up a notch for all of your sons that gives us your drive on a level that we've never experienced. Otherwise, we hit a point where we're treading water. We're not really going forward. We're not really going backward. We're kind of in stasis, and that's not acceptable. Father, we must have your drive. There must be a deeper impartation that enables us to finish the race at this time. We draw that, we loose that, we remind you, Father, that we stand in your presence as you dwell within us and we dwell within you. We're not speaking to a God out somewhere that doesn't know us or we do not know, but you hear our every word. You know when we sit down, you know when we stand up. You know our innermost thoughts. We want to finish the course. But Father, we need something from you. Maybe we're trying to define it. Maybe it's something different. Whatever it is, we claim it tonight as we wait before you. In Jesus' name, amen.